Welcome everybody to the SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast and this time we'll have a look on how to integrate your client-side web part properties with SharePoint. My name is Vesa Juvonen, I'm a senior program manager from SharePoint Engineering and today's uh, the demo, demo person uh, will be Waldek, so Waldek will you do the quick intro as well. Yes, hi everybody, my name is Waldek Mastikas. I am Office Development MVP, I work at Rencore, and today I will show you how you can integrate client-side web part properties with SharePoint. Excellent. So before we go to the actual demo and let's see this one in practice, it is actually a super cool demo and super cool uh, how these things actually work. Let's quickly kind of clarify what are we actually talking. So in when you're writing a, a SharePoint framework client-side web part, you can actually define additional uh, metadata for your client-side web part properties. So those things which are configurable within the property uh, panel. And essentially what you can do is that you define that metadata uh, for the property itself and then SharePoint knows additional things about the property and can do additional automation. For example, uh, remove unsave HTML if you mark that, uh, that uh, field or property to be an HTML field. It can do link fixing, a super cool thing. So if, if you define that a certain property is actually a link to a URL inside of your SharePoint Online, SharePoint will take care of link fixing for you. Or or if you want your texts uh, and the web part properties to be indexed, you can actually mark that to be uh, with as a metadata for your property as well. Um, one thing to notice here is that this only works for the modern SharePoint pages, and this is due to technical uh, the technical implementations um, on the uh, well inside of the modern pages versus the classic pages. But basically, um, this is all capable, all possible for you already today uh, in SharePoint Online when you are using the modern SharePoint pages in mo uh, modern team sites or in a classic team site. So really, the, key, the the difference is the experience, the modern pages experience. Good. Um, now, what, what does it actually mean from a uh, configuration perspective? So, in your code, you can actually use um, this override, uh, the properties metadata override, where you can define at this additional metadata for your property. So in the, in the example, which is in the slide, you can see that we are we have actually four different properties, title, intro, image, and URL. And then we're adding that metadata information for specific properties. So the title has been marked as is searchable plain text. Uh, the intro has been marked as an is HTML string. The image has been marked as is an image source and the URL is marked as a link. And the table actually defines what it, what it kind of means uh, in practice. So if you define no metadata for your properties, your, your property values are not searchable. So you will not find the page, for example, with the web part, uh, if you try to find the page based on information which has given as a property value or rendered throughout the, the client side web part. Um, the same applies that the link fix up doesn't actually happen automatically and the HTML isn't removed automatically. The, the first option in the table is the is searchable plain text. And this means that if you set this metadata for your property, that property or the value of the property will be indexed as part of the page content. So if you're searching a page from your SharePoint Online where you have this kind of a web part available, the search results will show you the page uh, as a but well, as an output, uh, as a result as well. The is HTML string means that if somebody is actually entering a value on the on the field property pane field, and is entering, for example, HTML tags inside of the inside of that value, uh, the SharePoint will fix uh, or de uh, escape or remove that HTML values from the from the property automatically. So you don't have to fix up that one uh, or get rid of the unsafe HTML by yourself. The East image source right now doesn't actually have a significant, uh, that much meaning. We're looking into having this additional capabilities on this one in the future. Uh, we're recording this video on September 2017, so it slightly depends on when you're watching the video, if there is already additional capabilities on this one. And the last option is, is link. And this is essentially if you have a link or property which is defining a link in SharePoint Online, we actually fix that link for you automatically, and which is super, super cool. Uh, it's it's mind-blowing when you see that one in practice in the demo as well. Anything you want to add here, Waldek? Also, I'm a bit on the fence whether I'm, I, I want to ask you to tell more about link fix-up because, I mean, I understand search, right? I understand what it means that search will index the contents of whatever you enter in web part and you will be able to find the page with the web part on it, right? So that's a new thing that 
we could not do or achieve in the past. <clears throat> yeah. Now, with regards to fixing up links, as you said, it's cool. And I'm not sure, but I want you to clarify that what it exactly means, or do we show that first in, in, in a demo and then really iterate through that? Like, why is it really important for you, you to have it? Let's actually have the look on the demo and then let's, okay, let's cool. then talk about the, we'll uh, the implications and that, which is a good guideline or good segue to the actual demo section. So let's jump on the on the demo and we'll see Waldeck actually demonstrating those capabilities in practice in SharePoint Online and we'll come back on the presentation to close up on the after the demo. All right. So let's have a look at how integrating SharePoint framework, client-side web parts properties with SharePoint works in practice. Here we have a web part on a page um, that I've built and that illustrates the demo. So we have four properties like uh, title, which is here and which you see here in web part. There's intro image. There is some rich HTML text here and there is a link. And we can change all of them here as, as we go. So we, we can add some text here and that will, will appear immediately in web part. Here we have add some HTML. So we can make, for example, the first few words in bold. Let's change change that. And we can see that that that's being changed immediately. Here we have the URL of the image and here we have link to another page, right? So that, that's a link and if we click that, we will open the page in another tab, right? So all of that works. So now let's see how we benefit of actually the, the meta data that we set on, 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 on the web part. So first, let's check whether this keyword here comes back in our search, right? Because title has been mar marked as is searchable plain, 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 plain text, right? So let's grab this word and let's go to a search result page where we look for it. I press enter to get search results and here you go. Here we get the result of the page. So if I open that page, we'll see that that's actually uh, the, the page that you have just seen yeah. with the web part, yes. Yes. Yeah, and actually you can see that that word comes only one time on this page and it's only inside, inside, inside the web part, right? So that's already proves the value that we see here that you can find the page based on text that's stored inside the web part, which is why you could, you, could, you could have never done before, right? So that's a new thing and it proves that it works. Yeah. Another thing, and that's really uh, useful as well when you build a web part, like here, imagine that you want users to be able to uh, enter um, HTML. And here it's in text, but imagine that you would overlay that with a HTML editor so that they can do it in a what you see is what you get mode. Now, if users are capable enough, they could also try to include a script. Like here, imagine that I would like to include a script with alert one. And I mean, that's just, just a, a sample, but they might want to try include a widget or something else that you might not allow them to. So as you have seen, the text is being updated as I type, but there is no alert here. And let me show you the way it works. So let me publish this page. And now when it's saved, I will reopen it. Three to one. It could have been that, it, yeah, it's, it's been open for a little too long. So published here, let me go go back, back to it and show you the contents of the HTML. Let me edit the web part. And here, if I scroll all the way down where, where, where I entered the script, the script is not there. Because I marked this property as is HTML source, SharePoint by itself removed any unsafe HTML from it. I didn't need to do any scrubbing, checking which tags are there, parsing, regex, and all that. No, that's being done already by itself by CMS. So I don't need to do any of that, right? And, that's, and, and that saves you a lot of time and also uh, sa saves you from a risk that people might embed script that, that will break the page, right? Okay. Then there is also another thing that is really big, and that's going to save you a lot of time managing the web parts when they are used on your intranet. So as you can see here, we have two links. We have a link to an image and we have a link to a page, right? What if, imagine, and that can be a totally plausible case, somebody would rename this page. Now imagine that you have quite a few of these, these web parts across your whole intranet. And the last thing you want to do is to have links that don't point to anything, right? So let's illustrate that. Let me sa save this page. 
right? So that I prove that I'm not changing anything. If I click now on the link, it will show the, the linked page in a new tab. So, and that's the New York launch highlights 7.aspx. So now let's go to, to the, um, um, the library where we have this page and let's rename the page. So we have it here. I choose the page, click here, rename, and let me change the name just to eight. Save it. But let me now go to the page, refresh the page, and let's see at our link. Let's have a look at our link, like what it points to. So now if I open that in your tab, it still works. And now it points to eight. And the best part is, if you can check it here, if you can, can zoom in on the state, it also shows eight. So what SharePoint did by itself, it's updated config of my web part for me. To That's ensure that super my cool. web part points to correct page. That's almost right? like how how that's magic. That's really cool. Yes. Yes, and that's actually a big thing, right? Because imagine, as I said, imagine that you have quite a few of these across your whole internet. The last thing you want to do is to employ somebody to check every single day throughout the whole internet whether all, all of your links are still correct. So you can have SharePoint check that for you by itself. And as you've seen, the changes are done immediately. So there is no lag in waiting uh, for process to scan all that. that. These things are applied immediately. So users will never be affected by changed link if property has been marked as is link or is limit or is image source or is HTML. So, right? Because for, for all these three, SharePoint rewrites links. That's and to show you how, it, yeah, you have yeah. A song? go. No, no, I'm, I'm just still amazed on on the fact that it's actually. <laughs> so right. how do we actually do that in a, in a code sign? So let's have a look on that yes. as well. Yeah, and it's really simple, right? Because the only thing that you have to do, so here you see properties that I have have in Web, right? Which is title, intro, link, image, and from the code point of view, it's all string, right? Because title is a string, rich HTML is string, link is a string, image is a string. So from the code point of view, it's all strings. Right, and the only thing you have to add, and that makes it so simple, is the method here to override the properties metadata, and then for each one of these, you have to tell what type it is. I mean, and that applies only to things that you want to either include in index or also. So imagine that I had another one uh, property called um, how many lines of text you want to show, and that would be a number. Well, I wouldn't want that number to be um, um, included in search, process, or anything. So with that, I would not need to include it here in this list. So here, I only need to include properties that I want to enrich, if you will. Right. So here, I have the is searchable plain text, HTML string, image source, and, and link. And that's it. These few bits of code... Um, um, tell SharePoint what it should do with the values that users entered in web part. That's it. That this is as simple as 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 that. And maybe one thing to notice what you actually mentioned already, but it's kind of reiterate on that one. Um, now that you're adding there is link or uh, is image source or is HTML string, that actually includes also the attribute is searchable plain text. So essentially, you don't have to mix and match uh, all of these things because if you use the is link, that is actually means that the, the information will be also uh, indexed. Yes, and we explained that on our doc page where we talk through all of that and include some more info as, as well, that although in theory you could set two of them, two of these flags, so here you, you could say is link, is HTML string, while you yeah. could do that, you should not do it. You should only include one flag because only one flag uh, um, applies, and if you in, in, in include multiple, it could be that it will end up doing something else that you intended to. Yep. So include only one flag, and on our docs, you, you can read like what properties or what results each of these flags have, right? So you can choose whether it's only a link, or if it's linked with an image, or it's HTML field, or, or it's just, just plain, 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 plain text. And the one thing that I also want to show you is that for HTML, we pass that as is to React um, 
part that we have as 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 well and we do not escape that so that is just the value that we have and we set that as html so there is no additional work that we have to do in in order to ensure that nobody will in, inject a, a script right that's already included in there yeah. right so we don't need to change change any of that makes sense Cool. I think that's it for the quick demo. Let, let's flip back on the slides and close up the webcast. Thank you, Waldek. You're welcome. So thanks, Waldek, for the demo. Uh, it's great to see actually that the, how, how these things are available and it, it, it increases the productivity of the developer. So as a developer, you do not need to worry about the certain things within your implementation. So the SharePoint is taking care of uh, some of the, the automation for you. Um, anything what you want to come up with uh, or as a summary or as a conclusion on this one right so now you mentioned only the developers but I guess the um, the benefits are, are even more because if you think about it like we said right imagine that you have big tenant and you have web part that allow users to link to a document or an or an image the last thing you want to do is to every day have process or a check that will go through all of all of the um, internet and ensure that all links are correct, right? Yes. So if you do it correctly, if you build the web part the right way, you will be able to benefit of the power that CMS already has and will do it for you. So there will be no additional work from the operations point of view, which is in a big tenant, significantly bigger benefit than developer work that 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 you would save let's say re, re, uh, related to escaping a html i mean that's a benefit um already by itself but i guess the benefit of managing of links and urls that's a really big thing that is absolutely yeah. that is a big thing no doubt because it, it used to be so painful back in whenever whenever time frame on a, on a sharepoint or in cms solutions to keep up those links uh, or fix those links automatically and this well technically this capability has been in certain ways in sharepoint for years already uh, but now it's kind of also provided for client side web part or the developers to take advantage which is super super cool yeah, and also another thing that I guess that that's it's really important is the fact that in the past when you wanted to have some text on a page and be able to to allow users to find that page based on a text, basically the constraint that you had was that you could not enter that text in web part because sure. it wouldn't come come com, com back at search. Sure. So the the consequence was, of that was that you had to think up front about how you would compose a page of different elements like a rich text and web parts. Now all of that is gone, so you can do it more easily, and you can have your rich text inside web parts, and at the same time have it come back in search. So Absolutely. that's also another thing that that that, that simplify building and managing pages in your 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 intranet. Absolutely, absolutely. Great benefits and great to have this uh, natively supported in the, in the SharePoint framework uh, already at this stage because still the SharePoint framework is a relatively new fellow. Um, and we'll have additional support, additional metadata support and additional advantages uh, coming up uh, on this area in the future as well. But I think that sums up the, the webcast. So thank you, Waldek, for the great demo uh, and hopefully you'll find uh, the cover topic uh, interesting. Uh, and we'll reference in the uh, video notes, we'll reference all of the documentation around this topic so you can actually learn more uh, on how to make these things happen for your web part. But thank you, Waldek, and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. Bye-bye. All right, bye.